Remember, LeBron James played uh, for the Oakland uh, Slamming Jam Soldiers, which was an a, a AU team that I sponsored um, early on in my career. And I always knew about LeBron James since he was 15 years old, had conversations with him while he was still in high school, um, went to a lot of a vast majority of all his AAU games because, you know, I was the NBA guy. I was the NBA guy behind the AAU team. So I, having an opportunity to fast forward, uh, you know, to play with him was, a, was like, what is this? Because I remember when he was 15 years old, Calvin Andrews, who uh, is now Aaron Gordon's agent, was my agent at the time and Carmelo agent at the time. He was my AU coach uh, when I was in AAU. Calvin Andrews said, uh, you want to go see the best basketball player to ever touch a ball? I said, where at? He said, go over there in gym five. I forgot where he was at. He said, go to gym five go to gym five and I'm watching LeBron James play at 15 years old. Cause we're trying to recruit him to come to soldiers. And I'm like, he's not doing anything special. He's, he's just making the regular pass. And oh, well, actually that is the right pass. And he's rebounding. His team is up 20. Uh, he, what well, he had a triple double. It didn't look like he had a, tri it didn't look like he had a triple double. Like it, didn't, it was a nothing flashy. It was just all like, I'm going to win this game. It, it's straight to work. And I was like, nah, I don't think he's the best player in the world. Go over there to gym one and go look at that boy, Chris Duhon. He just made seven threes in a row. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, because hey, Chris Duhon was like supposed to be like one of the top guys in the country at the time. Right. I was like, he's not better than Chris Duhon. He's not better than Chris Duhon. And then slowly <laughs> but short, slowly but surely, I got to see him in different, a couple of other tournaments. We had a tournament at Cal Berkeley he came and played at, and we were down 20 points. And how he willed the team together, and we brought, I think we brought him and and uh, uh, Drew Bryce off the bench because we also had him. That was his point guard in high school. We had brought them off the bench. I say, hey, just because y'all who y'all are, you still got to come off the bench for the soldiers. LeBron James came off the bench. Wow. Single handed, single handedly brought our AAU team back down twenty points to win the championship, get MVP. And I'm like, okay, I'm starting to see some type of difference. Like he's different. Then the TV games is televised, it's high school games. I'm like, okay, he's making those strides, and he is the talk of the town. By the time I got to him in Cleveland, man, Scott Williams, who played with Michael Jordan, was like, I asked him, I said, yo, is he better than Michael Jordan? Uh, like, right now at this age? Or like, I mean, like a 23-year-old Michael Jordan, like a 24-year-old Michael Jordan? He's like, yes. I said, how about like a 25, 26 Michael Jordan? He's like, yes. I was like, how about like a 28, 29? <laughs> and he's like, you know what? He still got some more time for that. <laughs> but like, you know, I was like, okay. And, and, me, and me being his teammate and being able to get the information from Scott Williams, who won two championships with Mike, you could kind of start seeing like, yo, he is different. But we had, we were just fortunate enough to see it every day where we got used to it. The outside world wasn't used to it. You know? Mm. Hey, Drew, you know what? And you, since you've been watching LeBron, since he was 15, are you amazed at how this young man, or man now, has worked on his game to see his body just fill out the way it has become to be, I mean, he's a, you know, I always say that Larry Bird was the hardest player for me to ever have. I'm so glad I've never had to play against LeBron James because it would have been difficult. Yeah. Listen, uh, his development, just get back to his development. I mean, when I was with him in his early on years, he didn't really lift weights. Uh, you know, he didn't really take training serious like that. I mean, he was a, a phenom. I mean, this man was a, a real superhero. He is a superhero. And uh, I think when he first started taking things serious is when he got with Mike Mancius, who was, I believe, an intern at the time with us in, in Cleveland. Wow. And it all started like this. Uh, LeBron James needed somebody to go stretch him out before, the, before practice off on the side. Mike Mancius was the guy. Fast forward now, Mike Mancius, wherever you see a guy handling uh, LeBron James, a water bottle, anything, mm -hmm. stretching him out, he, he's been in Miami with him. He's, he's been back in Cleveland with him. Now he's in L.A. with him. So that's like his right-hand man. I think once he got with Mike Mancius, I think he started taking things a lot more serious and, um, and, and getting his, his, his uh, work ethic together because not only that, he's a competitive guy. I feel like he starts seeing what other guys are doing. 
if guys would not drink alcohol for a whole season, LeBron James don't, doesn't drink alcohol for the entire season. You know what I'm saying? So he's a very dedicated uh, person. And but one thing I love about LeBron James, I played with many superstars. When he comes into the room, the energy goes up and it never goes down. Wow. You know, it's always on a it's always on a positive note. Um, and I think that's what makes him so much so much of a success story because if there's no teammate or ex teammate that does not want to play with LeBron James, they want to play with LeBron James. Mm. You know what, Drew, I'm glad you said that like that because that was exactly how Magic Johnson was. When Magic came yeah. into a room, I mean, it went up, man. And like you said, it, it doesn't go down until that guy leaves. And sometimes their mystique over the team that they're around every day, even when they leave the room because of the standards he set, that volume stays up there. But, I mean, that's a great analogy or a way to, to say when them players like Magic, LeBron, I'm pretty sure Kobe was the same way. When them players come into the fold of a team, they just change the whole atmosphere. Yeah, and and then when they're missing, it you could you could feel it. I mean, when LeBron James, I, I clearly remember he missed like eight games in a row. I don't know how many won, like two and six, and that was the first time Coop I seen a double team. I was like, yo, I don't like this. Where you at, bro? 